If you guys haven't seen some of our other videos we've done, go back and look at them because some of them are really good and I think really bring some great information. Uh, Nicole is a certified nutritionist coming from a holistic functional type background, which I love because I believe in it. Um, if you want to reach out to me, you can get me at stevemain.com and uh, leave, as always, leave comments, suggestions, questions uh, in the comment section. And we'd love to see or hear what you guys want us to talk about, what you want um, a very qualified, um, educated nutritionist uh her opinion on different supplements or foods or whatever it might be. So welcome, Nicole. Hi, great to, great to be here. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics and yours also protein, the protein needs. And let's talk about, I don't, we could go on and on and on about oh, yeah. this, why we need protein, <laughs> what proteins do. Um, amino acids are a, a, a chain that makes a protein. How much do you need as a child? How much do you need as a senior citizen? So um, it, it's, we were talking before we got on camera, it's the first macro that I recommend people get right for them. Everyone's different. Everyone's got a specific number that's gonna be in the ballpark for them, depending on their age. So we're talking about this, um, macronutrient protein what are your initial thoughts oh protein is one of my favorites <laughs> um i say that a lot but when we get it right and we do the right things it really makes a difference in the body protein is one of those things that we we don't number one we don't get enough of number two as we get older we we even more don't get enough of uh, we, we seem to deplete the protein before anything else. And the other thing is, is that we're such a carb filled world right now that we'll take the carb over the protein. And then we wonder why we're constantly hungry. So one of the things that I always tell my clients first and foremost, is you have to get your protein, right? If you don't, you aren't going to feel satiated. And that's a big deal. All of us walking around feeling hungry and we want the next carb. We want where that sugar to come in because we're sugar burners instead of burning our own body fat. Um, one of the things that I always tell my clients is on your plate in front of you, your protein should be the majority of that plate and then fat, then carbohydrates. That's a bit, that's how you walk away from a table feeling full and feeling full in the right way, not overstuffed. You know, and people, I think one of the first things that people under, need to understand is how much is in certain foods and get an idea of, and this is an example that I've used in multiple videos and multiple video uh, interviews, is that if you ate eight eggs, eight whole eggs, and you ate a half a pound of lean ground beef, Half a pound, that's a lot. And eight that's eggs, lot. that's 92 grams of protein. That's not enough for me. That's mm -hmm. probably not enough for you. No. Nope. And especially people that are older, that's not enough. Right. So how do you get enough? You got to know what foods are protein dense, you right. know, chicken and so on. But I, I hear people say that are older, older than me. Oh, I ate an egg and some peanut butter. Okay, you didn't even get started with the protein. You, <laughs> you didn't I, even budge I, the I, mark. <laughs> yeah, I, I give that example. Can you eat eight eggs? You know, this, you know, I may be talking to a 75 year old woman. Can you eat eight eggs and a half pound of lean ground beef? And she no? laughs at you. Okay. <laughs> well, then that's not enough protein, you know? Right. So that that's the first thing is understanding. What are some of the things that you give to that you recommend to your clients that are protein dense? So you guys, one of the things that I do is it, eggs. We've talked about this. Eggs is an, an egg is such a great protein. It is such a great everything. Really. It has a little bit of everything. It has fat soluble in it, vitamins. However, you know, 
you can get it from chicken, from pork chops, from tuna, from beef, from lentils. If you're a vegan, you can get it from fish. Even quinoa has um, protein in it. But here's a really good way to do this. If you do your calculations out to get your protein, um, and I'll give you a quick way to get your protein. There's lots of other factors, but I'll give you a quick one. Um, if you can't get enough protein in, in your intake of food, you should be supplementing with an amino so that you're, you have the building blocks to a protein. That is really important. And I always tell my clients, you know, in the fitness world and in the holistic world of nutrition, you know, maybe you can't sit down and eat, you know, a big steak, that kind of thing, but just sip on your aminos throughout the day that have your nine essential amino acids in it to make the precursor of the protein. It's a, it's a good way to get it in and not feel like you're constantly eating a meat. <laughs> yeah, that's great advice. And especially if you're vegan, mm -hmm. because the protein breakdown, the amino acid breakdown is different in plant-based protein. So if, if I have people that I'm working with, I always tell them if they're using a pea protein, great, spike it with leucine. Absolutely. But supplement vegan. Uh, I think a lot of vegans are, are, what they do is they say, okay, I'm just not going to eat animal-based products. That's not, that's one rule. That is not a good enough rule to be healthy for sure. So what are you going to go eat all these? Pro a vegan can eat processed foods. A, a vegan can eat potato chips and still say they're a vegan. Exactly. So you need to get rid of the processed foods. And I, we're kind of going towards vegan, which I'm not. I don't know if you are. I don't I'm think not. You are. No. But if you are a vegan, amino acids, get all of the essential amino acids. Yes. Essential amino acids come in formulas. And when you take those amino acids, they can make all the other amino acids that your body needs for enzymes or building muscles, uh, chemical reactions, everything. That's one of the smartest things I think a vegan can, can do is take amino acids. And a lot of older people, yes, the, the protein is great in an egg, but it's only six grams. Right. You know, you got to eat a lot of eggs to get enough protein. So exactly. There's other uh, really dense protein, like bone broth is very oh. protein dense. And so is cottage cheese. You can eat a little bit of cottage cheese and get a lot of protein, but you got to get that variety and make sure you're getting all the essential amino acids. Absolutely. You know, and you mentioned muscle just a minute ago. And one of the things that helps, you know, as you have the intake of protein, that's also going to help muscle mass and help you to keep on muscle mass. As we age, our muscle mass goes down. So it's easier. That's why, you know, a lot of the times you see diabetics start to pop up in their later years because they are losing their muscle mass. And what happens is um, when we have muscle mass, we have insulin receptors on our muscles that take in glucose and use them appropriately. So it's important to have the muscle coming from the protein amount you eat. It, it's, a, it's a cycle that keeps on the healthiness of our bodies. Yeah, you're so right. And because muscle makes your body work <laughs> efficiently, the more muscle you have, the better your body's going to work. Uh, the, the better your metabolism is going to be, the, the strong mitochondria and protein, without the protein, you can't maintain that. And especially as people get older, they kind of lose their appetite, but yeah, you got to keep the protein up. That's the, in my opinion, the first and most important macronutrient to get right. Make sure you get enough of it. Oh, because, absolutely. Yeah. Your body wants it right? Yep. Oh, and it craves it, which a lot of the times we're craving sugar because of what we're putting in the body, but your body actually is craving proteins. Um, one of the things that I really wanted to touch on for protein that I think is, um, you know, not well known out there is hormones. Protein is essential to perimenopause and menopause. 
we, especially in my age group, we have a bunch of women walking around not knowing what's happening to their bodies because their hormones are going out of whack. And protein is a key essential nutrient to get into the body. It helps with our elasticity. It helps with our moisture. It helps with, you know, that means our gums, our eyes, our skin. I have clients walking around bumping their hands and they get an enormous bruise on it. That's because their collagen production is down. They're not eating enough protein. So it helps our testosterone production, which is our muscle mass. It's also our libido. We're all, you know, at this stage in the game, we're losing all these things and becoming, you know, a shell of a person, but we can fix it with certain things like protein. You know, and it, it, if if I made a comment, tell me what how you would respond to this comment. If I say proteins, we'll say the amino acids that make mm-hmm. proteins, the amino acids do absolutely everything in your body. Well, I would know that that's a very would important you call statement. Me a liar? I mean, well, would you call me a liar? Or? I wouldn't, but mo- some people would. Some, especially because. You do have, and, I, and I'm not picking on vegans by any means, but you do have people who are completely plant-based that don't get enough protein and they feel like they're sick all the time. That's because they don't have enough protein. It's such an essential thing for our bodies. Yeah, and even the ones that are getting a lot of protein aren't getting the right amino acid profile, correct? Absolutely. Correct. Oh, because absolutely. you have to have all the essential amino acids. Your body can't make them. You have to have all the essential amino acids in the right proportion so that your body can make all the rest of them. Hey, you can be a healthy vegan. I mean, I believe that. Sure. I, 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 I did vegan for a couple months and got my blood work to, to just see what it did. Um, but I was pounding... The, the vegan protein powder, and I was pounding the amino acids. Absolutely. And e- eating a lot of leafy greens, and my blood work came out great. But I know how to be a healthy vegan. I wasn't right. eating potato chips. I wasn't eating candy bars. Um, so you can do it, but that's the key right there, is getting all the essential amino acids in the right proportion. And you know, a scoop or two of a good quality amino acid is equivalent to 30 grams of protein. Oh, absolutely. You know, I use one that is one scoop is 30 grams. So I know I'm going to hit my daily, even if I'm, you know, if I'm even fasting and I eat one meal a day for the time period, I can use my aminos that are not going to break my fast and still get the protein intake because it's the building block of the protein. Yeah. And I mean, my last little bit of input is you hear a lot of fitness influencer and influencers and health and wellness. They say, well, you're wasting your money. Here's my response to that. I don't care. It's an insurance policy. It's you're, you're, how hard is it to get too many amino acids and, and too much protein? It's, it's your body's, it, it's, it it's uses that for the chemical reactions and to build and to repair your body. So yes, if I take more amino acids and more protein in my body needs, um, yes, I wasted some of my money, but we pay for insurance. We pay for auto insurance and we pay for health insurance. And we hope we don't need it, right? Right, right. Well, and Steve, we could take that in more and it, this, this might open a can of worms, but it's going to turn into a carb if you take in too much protein, but if you're efficient and you're using your body, moving your body and using that, it's going to fill it in where it needs to go. It is definitely the insurance policy. And I'd rather pay that insurance policy and have my body right rather than go blow my money on a Starbucks drink. Right. And you're right. I mean, your body will use the protein. It's the third choice for energy and it has to change it into glycogen. It changes Mm -hmm. fat into glycogen and then it will go for the protein if there's an excess. But Again, it's an insurance policy and it's, it's a, when you figure out your body and you know exactly how much you need, 
you're not going to overdose on amino acids if if you just test your body and know your body. But yes, right. you're right. That can happen. But I like to look at it as an insurance policy for my health. Absolutely. I'll do that any day. <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, again, thank you for your incredible input, Nicole. Uh, can't wait to do the next one. And uh, if you guys have questions or comments or experiences with protein and amino acids, we want to hear your opinions. It doesn't have to be the same as ours. If you have questions or you want to hear Nicole's opinion, put them in the comment section. Nicole, thanks for being with us. Thank you so much for having me.